Hey guys, Jeff here from That Bold Life, your weekly source for Christian education, inspiration, and motivation. I haven't always been a Christian. I grew up more of agnostic, if not full-blown atheist. Let me tell you my story. So my story doesn't start in your traditional sense. It probably starts back whenever I was 17. I was given my girlfriend at the time, who would soon become my wife, I was giving her a ride home. Now she lived just a block away. It was maybe a three minute drive at best. We made this drive pretty much every day. To be honest, we never wore our seatbelts. It was just going right there and right back. It was no big deal. But one particular day, whenever I was 17, we were starting to pull out of my driveway and it was raining just a little bit. And for some reason I looked at her and said, hey, let's go and put our seatbelts on. She didn't really protest. She put her seatbelt on and so did I. And we turned off the drive. Not even 30 seconds later, we get hit head on by a drunk driver. I still remember it so vividly that in the flash of a moment, I seen headlights and heard a collision and dust filled the room. I, I blacked out for a moment from the airbag. Everything went silent. I remember, I remember sort of coming to and, and thinking the truck was on fire because of all the dust from the airbag. and and grabbing Jessica and trying to pull her out of the truck on my side. It was a crazy moment, but we were okay. We were actually able to walk away, uninjured, unharmed. The police reports later said that the drunk driver was doing 80 miles an hour on a wet road, that he came around that turn and he just couldn't make it and he hydroplaned and he hit us, his passenger side to our passenger side. That tells you how far over he was. Now him and the teenagers he had in the car with him were all okay too. But it's just a miracle that we were, because like I said, we never wore our seatbelts on that drive. Had we not put our seatbelts on, if not for some reason, I stopped at the end of my driveway and said, Jessica, we need to put our seatbelts on. I don't think I would be here to record this video for you today. Right after the accident, we were standing out there waiting for an ambulance to get there. And I remember hearing from somewhere behind me someone say, you better thank your maker. You better thank your maker. And I remember that sort of clicked just a little bit that I should not be alive. I need to be thinking somebody. And like I said, at this time, I didn't believe I wasn't a Christian. I was much more agnostic, meaning I really just didn't care. I had no interest in religion or a God. If there were not some sort of intervention that day, I would not be here today. And the worst part is I honestly believe that had God not spared me on that day, that I would have died not being a Christian, not being a believer, and I would have went to hell. That's what I believe today. But that wasn't the moment that I came to faith in Christ. Now you see, that was only a piece of the puzzle. On that day, it opened my eyes just a little bit. I would go on for the next several years, still not living a Christian lifestyle, still not believing, until I would marry that girl, that same girl that I was in the accident with, and then she would tell me that we should go to the church that she went to as a kid. Now, I didn't necessarily object, but I was like, okay, let's, let's do it. She wants to. Um, anything to make the wife happy, right? Well, she drags me to this church, and it's unlike any kind of church I've ever been to. The pastor's in jeans, they're playing like rock music. It's an amazing atmosphere and people are friendly, people are happy I'm there. It was awesome. So we stay at this church for a few months. Her old youth pastor comes up to us and asks if we want to help and be youth leaders. And we're like, sure, yeah, we'll help out whatever we can do. Well, once again, this wasn't my salvation, but it was another piece to the puzzle. Because a few months later, I, they'd invite us to go to a youth pastor conference. A conference where I'm going to learn to minister to teenagers, all the while not really a Christian myself. I go to this conference two, three days in, and each day just more pieces of that puzzle being added on as I learn more about Jesus and I, I, I hear these songs and I hear, have these experiences. And on the final day of that conference, I just feel something. I feel something in here that I just can't explain. And it was in that moment, at a youth pastor conference where I'm learning to minister to teenagers, it was in this place that I gave my life to Jesus. Now, I don't know how everyone else's 
testimony goes. I don't know how anyone else's salvation goes, but it wasn't just Jesus saving me, but it was a promise from me to Him. Because in that moment, I didn't feel like God was just calling me to salvation, but I felt like God was calling me to ministry, that He was calling me to serve Him, to work for Him, that every action I go out and do now is for Him. And in that moment, in my salvation, I answered His call to ministry. That's why I'm here today, because I made a promise that Jesus, if you save me, I will serve you. And that's what I'm here doing today. So I just want to encourage you. If maybe you're on YouTube scrolling around, just watching some testimony videos, if you just want to be encouraged, if you just want to know that this God is real, that Jesus is real, that other people have really encountered Him and you're not crazy and you're not delusional and you're not mistaken, you're going through all these videos, I know where you're at. I've been there. I've watched testimony after testimony trying to convince myself of the doubts I have. I've had those doubts. You're not alone. But God is greater than our doubts. Jesus is greater than our flaws. Jesus was greater than our sins. The life He lived and the death He died and the resurrection He rose from are greater from anything we can face or go through. Wherever you're at, wherever you are in your story, however much of your puzzles put together, know that He is there, that He is real, that He is for you, He is never against you, and He loves you right where you are today. And if you need to speak to anyone about anything, I highly recommend you find a local church and you find someone to speak to there. But if you want to talk to someone online, feel free to shoot me a message or leave a comment on this video. Thanks for making it this far. If you liked what you saw, be sure to subscribe so you can get all my videos. I release them every single Friday. Now we're at the part of the video I like to call Bold Life Presents, where I present you guys with another YouTuber or content creator that's just absolutely killing it with some Christian motivation and inspiration. The guy I want to tell you about today is one of the guys that really inspired me to start doing this YouTube thing. I remember finding him when he was a fairly small channel and then seeing him kind of blow up and grow and his channel just explode and his online ministry just explode. Uh, that dude I'm talking about is That Christian Blogger. He is an absolutely awesome dude that puts out some amazing Christian content. Be sure to check him out here. Subscribe to his channel. Let him know that Jeff from That Bold Life sent you.